Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, I am going to give you some magnificent tips on how you can become a billionaire. Just like this down here, 1 billion, 134 million, 629,432 gold. So the farm that I have set up here is a farm that I've been playing on and off for over the years since the game has come out. And this farm is basically everything in it but at the moment the farm is set up in a way where it would generate a crazy amount of money every single day so without further without further ado i am going to take you through the farm setup here just, and just to show you what kind of a layout i have so if we start over to the left here i just have a load of solar panels set up here for battery packs now these batteries sell for 500 gold a piece and the reason why i have so many is because i went through a phase where I used to make a lot of crystallariums and I used to make a lot of uh, iridium sprinklers so I needed a lot of batteries. Next up we have eight coops. Now each coop is filled up with golden chickens. You can get golden chickens once you get perfectionist inside the game. Golden chickens have the exact same stats as regular chickens. They, you know, they, they, the same time to incubate them. They generate eggs every single day. But you see, golden chickens generate golden eggs instead of regular eggs. A golden egg, an iridium quality golden egg can sell for 1200 gold if you have the rancher profession. So what I do is I basically just leave these chickens lay eggs every single day. And maybe every couple of months I'll, uh, I'll go in, I'll check the auto grabbers and I'll take the eggs out and I'll, I'll just sell them. I won't convert them into mayonnaise, you get more for selling the actual egg itself. And each coop is set up with an auto grabber, an auto petter, a junimo chest. It just makes it very easy to sell items if I just put everything into the junimo chest. And a heater to keep these chikoritos warm during the winter season. Now the auto petters are really handy because it means I don't have to pet these chickens on a daily basis. I have the grandfather's shrine here uh, just done up a little bit. Just, just to pay homage to my loved grandfather who left me this farm. Down here then we have, uh, we have loads of honey. Now normally I have uh, flowers grown behind this honey to modify it so I get a lot more for the honey. Uh, but because I have so much money nowadays, uh, I don't really bother with it anymore. <laughs> Over here I have charcoal kilns and I have smelters. So if you put 10 wood into these, it gives you back a coal. And it's really handy, especially if you smelt an awful lot of materials. I used to smelt an awful lot of iridium bars back in the day and radioactive bars. Uh, and I went through a lot of coal. So what I normally did was when I was low on coal was I just cut down a lot of trees and I would just convert the trees then into, into coal. Down here then we have my silos, which because I have so many animals, I need a lot of silos to keep them fed. That's the only challenge with this farm layout. I don't have any room, or I didn't make any room to grow grass. So I constantly have to buy hay off Marnie. Now, if we take a look at my sheds here, I'll go into this one, and this is filled up with statues of endless fortune. Now, you can buy these in the casino for a million gold to pop. Now, a million gold may seem like a lot of money, and it is, but when, when you've played as long as I have, it's, it's, it's just pennies at this stage. So the reason why I've filled up the shed with these statues, it's, it's, it's just to flex a bit and <laughs> just show you what you can actually achieve if you stick with the one file for a good couple of years. So these statues generate... Omni geodes, gold bars, diamonds, iridium bars to generate, you know, the best of things. Let's have a look at the next shed here and see what we have in this one. So this is just my Skull Cavern shed. This one just generates jades, which I traded for staircases if I ever want to go back down to the Skull Cavern and have some fun. And then in this shed, it's filled up with looms. And the reason why I have so many looms is because I do not have pigs on this farm, believe it or not. I have sheep <laughs> and I'll explain to you in a few minutes why I have sheep and why I don't have pigs so down here we have a, um, a meteor that hit my farm and it, it's such a rare event I decided to just leave it there and not crack it open with my pick <laughs> and inside here then we have more coops and we have more golden chickens and it's the exact same setup as the other coops we have the auto grabber, the juniper chest, the auto petter and the heater so all those coops are the same so I basically spend my days on this file just looting the auto grabbers and selling the eggs. <laughs> so if we come up here now, we have my greenhouse. 
uh, just for the sake of profit i have this greenhouse filled up to the top with aged fruit now you'll probably notice there's no sprinklers down that's because i'm using uh, i'm using deluxe retaining soil so i don't have to water these at all and i've got banana trees here as well that i got from ginger island so over here we have six sheds in total three on the left and three on the right all these sheds are filled up with cakes for the sole purpose of processing ancient fruit into ancient fruit wine so that is where another big chunk of money comes from on this file it comes from the kegs so i basically have golden eggs i've got kegs for wine and then i have sheep for wool and cloth and and that's not and the thing is that sheep are totally underestimated in this game they're one of the best animals you can have in the game now i know pigs are in a whole different league but the problem with pigs are firstly you need a lot of space for pigs secondly if it rains the pigs won't come out they won't find truffles and they also won't find truffles in winter sheep the sheeps however if you have max friendship and if you have the shepherd art, uh, profession the sheep will generate wool for you every single day so if we take a look here now these sheep are generally they're new so they haven't generated a whole lot of wool for me yet so they're, so they're not they're not on max hearts just yet but when they do get max hearts they will generate wool for me every single day and wood can sell for an extraordinary amount of money so if you have the rancher profession and if you sell an iridium piece of wool you'll get 816 gold for that piece of wool that's a lot of money now it's not as good as a truffle but for animals that generate every single day and you don't have to go around you know pick pieces up it's a very handy way to get a lot of money very quickly like if i wanted to as long as i have to hay for it i could just sleep for a whole year and i could just let the chickens and the sheep just generate generate away for me sell it all at the end of the year and just make a huge <laughs> ginormous profit so i have golden clocks here and these golden clocks cost 10 million gold a piece uh, so this is my little square where I like to sit down and relax down here then I have my warp totems so this is my desert warp totem this brings me down to the beach this brings me up to the mountains and this brings me to ginger island so let's go to the desert and I'll just show you the setup that I have here now in the desert so the desert is basically the place where I go if I need syrups or if I need wood so over here, I just have regular trees that I cut down if I need wood. I don't have a whole lot at the moment because I just did a, a massive deforestation there a few weeks ago. And then I, then I have all the syrups and I've got heavy tappers. So heavy tappers generate syrups twice as fast as regular tappers. And all these trees are set up with those. And that is basically the setup I have for, uh, for the desert at the moment. So let's go back out and what I'll do is I will now go to the, the quarry and I'll show you the setup I have there. So my farm is primarily used uh, it's to just bring in money. I'm not growing any crops on the farm bar from the greenhouse. Uh, Ginger Island is the place, uh, you know, where all the crops are. So I will now go to the quarry and I'll show you what I got set up here. So what I have here now are, these are trees that generate hardwood. So if I need hardwood, I basically I'm just come along with a few bombs. I'll just blow the whole place up. And I will collect the hardwood from here. I'll keep the seeds that I get and I will replant the trees. And if I need more hardwood down the road, if I ever want to take on any additional projects. So I just upgraded uh, Pab's, Pab's caravan here to an actual house. Just to make the village look a bit better. So I totally forgot about that. <laughs> I've been playing this game a very long time, but I totally forgot to upgrade Pam's house on this file. So we'll just skip that. There's Pam's house. Good for you, Pam. Maybe now she'll give up her drinking ways and she'll actually, uh, you know, get her life together. I just I just built her a house. You're welcome. <laughs> so let's go back to the bus stop here now. So I'm actually doing this recording live. Normally I do voiceovers, but I said I'd do a live one this time. And just kind of show you my farm instead of doing the voiceover just to kind of change things up a bit so let's go to ginger island now. i'll show you my setup here so my ginger island farm is very boring but it's very profitable so it is basically every single tile that that i can access is filled up with uh ancient ancient seeds ancient fruit <laughs> that's it that's my ginger island farm 
and you you'll probably notice here too that I don't have any sprinklers down. It's because I use the uh, deluxe retaining soil, and it, it works here brilliantly because you, you know this this will give me several hundred ancient fruit, and that's what I need to put into the kegs back on the other farm. And that's all I've got here in Ginger Island. I I could put down more stuff if I wanted to. I could put down solar panels here. You know, I could put down I could put down some trees here if I wanted to increase my my keg. You know, my wine output. I could put stuff down here if I wanted to. I could put kegs down here. I could put serve jars down here if I wanted to. You know, so there's I can always expand if I need it to. Uh, but I feel like the setup I have at the moment is, it's it's very good, to bring in huge amounts of money. And what I'll do now is I will show you the inside of my house. And I'll just show you the setup here. So the inside of my house, it, it's it's more or less, uh, you know, for styling purposes. Um, there isn't a whole lot going on here, you know. It's I'll actually go to sleep and I'll show you the house when it when we get to daytime. So I've got floors down and I got wallpapers. This is my exotic bed that I got from Keys Walnut Room. This is my fish tank here with all the legendary fish inside it. I've got some chests here. Uh, now I do had this is my skull cavern. Um, chest so if I ever want to do like a you know like a speed run in Skull Cavern you know get down the levels get my hands on the lovely treasure chests this is what I bring with me I've got my my warp totem to the desert my magic rock candy my ginger ale I've got my staircases I've got my energy tonics and my cactus fruit and you get a lot of omni geodes in Skull Cavern so I have geode crushers here and I also have deconstructors here if I want to deconstruct other items into materials uh, this is my statue of tr true perfection, which generates a prismatic shard every day. And this is my statue of perfection, which generates iridium ore every single day. I love the monster fireplace. You, you can get this off Krobus underneath the sores. Uh, it's really nice. Down here then is my little uh, cactus room. And this is where I get my cactuses. If I want to go into Skull Cavern, this is my primary source of healing food. So I've got deluxe retaining soil put down here as well for my lovely cactuses so as you can see if I harvest the cactuses they'll grow back again they, they work the same way as the ancient fruit and the strawberries and the, and the blueberries you know so it's basically a, an unlimited supply of cactus fruit so down here then we have the the casks so I just harvested um, the last batch of uh, of ancient fruit wine. I just I put in a fresh batch a few days ago, so it's going to take a good while for this to generate more iridium star ancient fruit wine for me. But it is great when it does because you get a lot of money when it is generated. Now some people will actually put casks in all these spots here, and they'll just pick axe them out of the way when they're finished. But I mean. I've so much stuff put down that I don't bother doing that because it's not like I need money for anything. I'm at I'm at a stage now in the game where anything I do is purely out of, you know, the entertainment reasons. <laughs> um, I I have done everything you can possibly do in the game. The farm is a testament to that. So that is basically the farm setup that I use to make absolute crap tons of money. A setup like this will absolutely get you, you know the status of billionaire especially with the golden chickens like if i go into this coop here now let's have a look at the autograber let's take these out now this is just one coop and this is about it's about three months worth of eggs that are inside there so three seasons so let's sell these now let's just see just see what we get so we have uh, some regular ones some silver star ones gold star ones and iridium quality eggs so let's sell these, go to sleep, and see what we get. Just to show you the power of these eggs. So this is why I don't use pigs, because just look at the money these eggs are bringing in. 1200 for the Iridium Star, 900 for the Gold, 750 for the Silver, and 600 for a regular egg. And I probably won't get regulars anymore because the chickens are maxed out friendships, so they're probably going to alternate kind of between Iridium, Gold, and silver so I don't have to walk around every day and pick up the truffles 
I don't, you know, they, they're going to ge they generate eggs every single day. You can't go wrong with golden chickens. The only thing is that in order to get a golden chicken, you do need perfectionists, but you also need 100,000 gold if you want to purchase one off Marnie, or you need 100 key gems to get one off from Key's secret walnut room. But the thing is, once you get your first golden egg, you don't have to buy any more golden eggs after that. You can just wait for that chicken to generate more eggs. You can just incubate that one, and you can just keep incubating them until you have an army of golden chickens, <laughs> similar to this farm. Now, I know some people just literally set up pigs, but that's very tedious. That's a lot of work every single day. You have to go out and you have to pick up pick up those truffles. I prefer this setup because I can just sleep every single day. And I, I wake up every few days just to maybe replenish the kegs or harvest the harvest the the ancient fruit, you know, that generates over in Ginger Island. That's it. So this farm is basically a semi-automated billionaire making farm <laughs> that's the best way i could i could describe it for you so i'm going to leave the video there i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed my farm walkthrough slash uh tips on how you could become a billionaire and i will upload the next Sergio valley video in the next day or two so stay tuned for that if you've enjoyed my content so far please subscribe it would really help me out the vast majority of people that do watch my content are not subscribed so just click that subscribe button it will cost you absolutely nothing it's free to subscribe and it means that when you log into your youtube every day to look looking at content to watch you'll have a lovely shortcut to my channel and you can enjoy the stardew valley content i produce for the moment it's just stardew valley content that i produce i will be streaming stardew valley very soon so stay tuned for that also i hope to see you on the live streams and i hope to talk to you and get to know you a bit better and you can get to know me so thanks again and i'll see you in the next one bye for now thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos and as always have a great day